So, I am waiting for my OOD representative, Lisa, to call. Um, she's supposed to call here in... Well, she was supposed to call. She texted me. say at 8 30 I may be a minute or two late wrapping up a call I said okay I'm gonna be discussing my uh, phone call meeting with Lori at which I was discussing my communication issues with my Asperger's and what I needed from the company Specifically, I told them that when upper management communicates, they cannot communicate something that they know is not true because they are not ready. They told me that they were going to have an agreement and some paperwork for um, the extension for my contract and then came back and said, we as in they decided that they don't need me to sign an extension for my contract. And I don't like that because I emailed them before they emailed me and I gave them specific questions about when there would be an, a contract and um, what would be the terms. And they never responded to me. I... am concerned because my OOD representative and my boss and I all work for the same company. And I realize now how inappropriate that is. Um, so that's going to be the, the main uh, um, thrust of my conversation with Lisa when she calls. if she calls. Uh, Hi, Lisa. Hi, sorry about that. Being late. My apologies. Um, so, so, and also, I'm sorry I couldn't talk with you yesterday. I by the time, I know I had it Thursday afternoon available originally, but then it filled up. Um, so, where would you like to start today? Um, I really, I was wondering if you had anything that you wanted to say. Um, well, you know, I had, I had shared with you, you know, my thoughts from yesterday, and... I think that, you know, I, I can offer further explanation on that. Um, with what really made me arrive at that point is I think I was thinking about, okay, well, I know that you're dissatisfied with, with the conversation of Laurie and, um, you know, you ended that, we ended that conversation with, you saying to her, I, you know, I don't, don't, don't give me a solution right now. Let's just, I, you know, I said my piece, let's move on. We can pick it up later. And so I left that call thinking about, okay, well, what, what is the solution? And I realized I couldn't figure out a solution because I wasn't quite sure of the grievance. Okay. And, 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 processing that and thinking about it for a really long time I realized I couldn't I can't advocate I can't advocate for an accommodation that that I that I can't understand myself and that is really the catalyst for me thinking we 
if if I as your job coach can't work through the 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 need that you're having, then the need that you're having goes either either I'm an inadequate job coach, which you certainly may determine that's the case, or it, it it goes beyond what we can sort out in a job coaching vocational services environment. So I guess that I can offer that as a little bit further explanation. Okay. And then I would say the same, you know, I, I was thinking about the, the contract situation and I and I I arrived at the conclusion that, you know, it was the same way with that. I didn't I couldn't figure out a way in my mind to to have how to craft an accommodation around that. And that's, that's really, that's how I have to approach everything in job coaching, is if something's not working, right, what is the, is there, is there some kind of reasonable accommodation for doing it differently? And I can't justify one in my mind. So I guess that's what I can offer. Okay, thank you for, um... I mean, thank you for letting me know that you didn't understand. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I should say, I, I didn't understand. It was a, It's a process. It's not as though, you know, understanding is a process. It's not an idiot. It's not an on and off switch. It's a, you know, I, I always think of it as perspective taking. But that's my job as, as a job coach is to adopt as best I can the perspective of the person I'm working with and sometimes that's not immediate and I I give people the benefit of the doubt or even not the doubt the benefit of their own lived experience as experts on themselves right and I extend that out of respect so I do that until I find myself can find myself in an in alignment with what they seem to be needing, and so in in working on this, uh, you know, I I arrived at the conclusion of I really don't know what I can ask for. So it, it's at that point when I arrived at that conclusion, that's when I reached out to you. So it's not that I haven't been understanding and have just been giving you lip service. It's that I've been working on it. And once I arrived at the point where I, uh, I, I don't know what I can ask for, then I, then I share that with you. Okay. Okay. Um, I do have a question um, for follow-up. Sure. Uh, who did you speak to about this? I didn't speak to anyone about my supervisor. Okay. Yeah, this is it's, it's something. I this is this is my conclusion, um, not someone else's. Oh, and that's not why I asked. I'm, okay. I was legitimately wondering who it was that you had spoken to. When I ask a question, the answer is the thing that I'm looking for. You know, I'm not okay. trying. I'm not trying to get past that point. You know, I'm trying to understand that point. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah. I, I spoke to my supervisor. Okay. Um, well, was, was, I'm sorry, did I cut you off? No. Okay. No. Um, I would like to give you my perspective. Of course, please. I, um, I know that I was cogent and that I made valid points and I know that I did give Lori specific directions on the actions that were wrong and the steps that could be taken to ameliorate it that would not have been, in my view, an impossibility. 
Okay. I think, and this is my personal opinion off of how I felt from the way the conversation went total overall, I feel like what happened was I went into that conversation with a very, very high degree of conscientiousness and um, uh, seriousness, and so I was putting forth a lot of my ideas, and I feel like because our previous conversations had been rather um, unserious and didn't require attention to the same level as this conversation, I feel like you and Lori were unable to pay attention to what I was saying. And I think that parts of it were things that you did not want to hear. I specifically you guys did not ask any follow-up questions you did not tr ask for clarification on what you did not understand um, you repeated to me that you you know you just said I don't know what you want me to do which is a way of telling me that I have to go and I'll use the word analyze my problems more in order for something to be done. I said that at the end because I felt like if I had spoken anything else I wouldn't have been able to think. and that considering what I had said and my expectation that it would be taken seriously, I hoped that you and Lori may think it through and come back with questions and suggestions. That, okay. that said, in thinking it through for myself, I realized that the situation is, well, uh, first off, I, I, I would like to say that when I said your text was inappropriate, the specific reason I said that was because I have expressed to you that I have extreme difficulty with texting. And I don't know if I've made it made you aware, but that's because when someone texts me, I cannot just text and then go on with my day. You know, people want to text because they want to be able to do what they're doing while they're texting. And it makes me unable to focus on other tasks when I'm getting texts back and forth with someone that I view as important. So that's why I don't like texting. And the reason why it was inappropriate is because if you did not have the time to talk to me on the phone, then I feel like you should not have texted me at all about it and should have just told me that you did not have time to talk to me. Because what you texted me was a lot and I have a lot of thoughts on it that I now had to uh, go through and sort and order so that I could understand it before I was able to conceptualize it and be able to talk about it. Um, as far as the situation the, the situation I've come to realize is highly inappropriate because your decisions 
in how you respond to me have to be colored by your relationship to Matrix. You have to think about your job. Lori, my boss, also works for Matrix. So that puts me in a position where I cannot talk about the things that I need to talk about with you in order to feel comfortable talking to Lori about them. Especially because I realize that in this situation, the information that I give to you becomes an influence on, or, or there is a conduit through that side of communication, and there is a conduit through Lori's side of communication that goes above you and creates anonymity. So I do not know who is saying things, why they are saying things, or really what they're saying. When the person chose to communicate through Lori to me and said that they were going to have paperwork and it was in one of the, the chat meetings, not an email, unfortunately, um, they told us that Crystal was working on the, uh, um, I'm sorry, I forget the word for the document that you have to sign for that right now, uh, but they told me Crystal was working on it. So the person who did that needs to be told that I have Asperger's, that people with Asperger's, no matter how small the lie may seem to you, you have to respect that, and this is the hardest thing in the world for me to say to people, words physically hurt me. And people, you, you can't tell people that. I mean, I, not you, but like in the sense of people, if you tell people that words have that kind of power over you, you will be hurt for it. And it needs to become aware that there are a lot of people like that. Because it's not just Asperger's, but it is really hard for me because I have never had the freedom to stand up for myself. And the end result of what Lori did is that she verbally abused me. She may not realize that she did it. It may not be something that she ever wanted to do, but she did. And I understand why she did not really have the ability to get what I was saying because I think that it's very hard for people to understand that there is a two-way relationship in any business environment and if a company wants their employees to value the company as if it were their own and therefore give the company more value because that's what it's about it's about getting people to work harder so that the company gets more value. If that's what they want, then they cannot get it by lying to people. Because for some people, those tiny lies that everyone tells each other are destructive. And honestly, I... Um, I'm having a hard time figuring out how to handle it all, okay. and I do not feel safe. I worry about what is going to happen, and this is why, because the contract binds me to owing Matrix 
for the time that I was trained if I don't complete the contract. That contract, the fact that they decided to extend and tell me after the beginning date of the extension that they were going to not have any kind of a contract sent for me to sign and were just going to let it ride, so to speak, is completely inappropriate. And the contract is ambiguous about the end dates and start dates and when the different penalties and, and different things are into play. And in a contract, ambiguity goes to the party that did not write the contract. And this is a situation where in the past I would not have been able to protect myself because what you did personally, you gaslighted me. You, uh, I don't think that you acted as an advocate because an advocate first helps the person understand what they are trying to say and then helps the person say it to other people. And until I took it upon myself to analyze everything to a degree that I don't think other people would find reasonable, I was not able to see it. And that's why I get angry, because I am being hurt. I am being put in a situation where I can't think, so my choices are always random and never logical. And I'm being judged by other people because they're hurting me and they're judging me for my reaction to the things that they're doing to me. And my takeaway from all of this is really that what needs to change is that Matrix needs to decide if the idea that they are a better company is real or not. Because a company that wants to be better has to be honest about what is going on. They have to be honest that they are in it for the profit. They have to be honest that they need to give their employees the space so that they can make informed decisions and have a full life. Because if they're not giving their employees the right to an informed decision and the right to seek a full life, then they failed on their end. Can I can I say a couple things? Um, yeah, please go ahead. Share a couple thoughts. Sure. Well, first, I sincerely thank you for talking through that stuff with me because I know it's incredibly difficult. Um, so I thank you and have immense respect for you doing it. <laughs> Honestly, um, uh, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just cut you off really quick and let you go back. I just wanted to point out okay. the reason why I am able to do this is I just realized I gotta use my dad thinking. Okay. So, thank you. But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um. So a couple things. Um, and I in no particular order because I'm going from memory. So yeah, that's I apologize good. if it seems random. I have um, my pen. <laughs> pardon. I said I have my pen. Okay, okay, very good. Um yeah, I I definitely didn't mean to do anything that came close to looking like gaslighting you. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a human being and, and fallible, and my 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 actions may have come across that way, but there was no intent to do any such thing. Um, um, and, and that's you know all I can do is offer that. And, can I respond and, to that statement before you go on? Well, sure. Okay. Um, I I think. 
the honest answer from me is to say that I understand that there are many different motivations for why people do the things that they do. My point was that uh, um, the reason why I said you gaslighted me is because you did not understand what I was trying to say and you told me that you thought I should go see a therapist and that you would speak to the therapist to have continuity of care and you may not have realized that you were doing it but you need to understand when you tell someone that they need to seek therapy you have to do it in a positive way if there's any negativity in there, it is going to be a problem because you are hitting on an issue where, and in this case, you know there is a lot of history. And in my personal case, I have been trying to get into therapy. And the fact that I can't get into therapy and the roadblocks that have been put up in place for me getting therapy um, have been systemic made it really really hard because um, it was one, it's one of those words that hurts gaslighting stemmed from that from that um, communication is, is that what it was yes it was because if if someone's going to talk to me about my mental health um, first off I it's inappropriate to talk to me about my mental health from the perspective of I don't understand you you should go get therapy Especially because the ADA, and this is my, my point to the company and to Lori, is that in the 2008 amendment to the ADA, in Clause 5 of, I forget which paragraph it is, it states that the question of whether or not a person covered under the ADA is being helped is not a matter of, um, oh my goodness, I'm just going to pull it up. To read it because I'm not going to try and do it uh, from memory. Just give me two seconds because it's right here on my computer. <laughs> it's funny because I've literally had to open this up so many times I know exactly where the file is and how to get to it. <laughs> oh goodness. All right, so Congress finds that the purpose of this act are, and in that set, they say, to convey congressional intent that the standard created by the Supreme Court case, they give the case, and the numerous decisions of lower courts has created an inappropriately high level of limitation necessary to obtain coverage under the ADA, to convey that it is the intent of Congress that the primary object of attention in cases brought under the ADA should be whether entities covered under the ADA have complied with their obligations and to convey that the question of whether an individual's impairment is a disability under the ADA should not demand extensive analysis. And that is what they violated. They are telling me to go back and figure it out for them. When, um, when, when Laurie says... I, um, when Laurie responded to my uh, statement and what I explained when she responded not with trying to ask a question about what she didn't understand or state back to me what she did understand she chose instead to look at it from her own point of view and say well I don't understand and I'm I would like him to come back to me and tell me what he needs me to do so that I can do it. 
that is that is essential. So that, that's that's I mean, your reading of extensive analysis. Is that, that, am I understanding that correctly? Well, my reading of extensive analysis is that in that entire clause, in total, uh -huh. if you accept what it says, then someone who has a disability and comes in and gives a clear instruction and I said in there all I need is that if you are telling me something from an upper management that you tell that upper management that I have Asperger's and that they need to stop and look at their communication and they need to ask themselves am I being straightforward and am I including information that is not accurate because if they do that and then they don't fess up to it and own up to it and that's the thing is that what Lori did wrong is she did not accept responsibility for the actions that she had taken and she tried to pass responsibility by acting like you know this is something that she's told to do and she's just passing it along you know clearing her hands of it right. and that is not going to be acceptable <clears throat> So, so I, I have a couple thoughts. Um, you know, the the conflict of interest concern you raise is very understandable. Yeah, um, and that yeah, that's going to be something that is going to have to be figured out because, especially going forward, I mean, I don't know how Lori is going to handle this. Honestly, I feel like if Lori is not capable of talking to me about this, then she needs to find the person who is has the authority to talk to me about it, and we need to have an appropriate and civil conversation about what happened and my feelings about it, and they need to respond to me because the only fair and equitable solution I've given my thoughts. I've told them exactly why it's hard for me on multiple occasions. And I told them a solution that works for me. If they think it's unworkable or unreasonable, I think that it is reasonable for me to ask them to explain. And I also think it's reasonable for me to have the opportunity to think about their answer and make an informed decision. And that's what they took away from me because I was not able to make an informed decision. I am now working again, and, and I want to be very clear. This, what happened with Lori and you, is okay. horrific for me as far as accomplishing anything outside of taking care of what happened between you, me, and Lori. Because I have to. I mean, this okay. ri ri what's happening right now is the very thing that has caused my life to get ripped apart time and again. Okay. Um. So a, a few thoughts. Yeah. Um. So you know, I, and and I want to I want to say these before I we jump into them because they're kind of linked. So I need to, I need to offer them in tandem with one another. Oh yeah, I won't interrupt yeah. you. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Um. So the the matter of the the the, the kernel of where this you know where a lot of this comes from was was crystal um in the what do you call it the chat well, saying it, I'm working on the contract. It was and, not crystal. It was it was uh, it was either Lori or um, Heather okay. said that Crystal would be working on the contracts. Okay. Um. So it, where I have where I have a disconnect from how you have analyzed the situation, and again, this is something that took me a while to sort through. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but the, the place where I have the disconnect is 
if I were to read that, if I were in, in your shoes and I were to, to see that in the chat and they said, okay, um, some you know, Crystal's HR, they're working on the contract. And the, I know there had also been talk of, we're not sure what's going on with the contract. I, I would put it all together and the, the conclusion I would arrive at, okay, well, there was a contract that there was a contract underway, whether or not it was going to come to fruition, what was going to come of it is, is unknown. So I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have interpreted that as a lie. I would have interpreted it as when everything came out and they said actually there's not there's not a contract i would have said okay well that not having a contract was an option and i brian i i understand i'm not trying to win you over to how i'm interpreting it i'm just telling you how i would have interpreted it so and that's that's why i that's what keeps me from being able to get on board um, with, with exactly how you're seeing it. So that's one one piece of it. And, uh, and so I wanted to explain that. Um, it, I, I just wouldn't have arrived at the same conclusion. Um, and the other thing, I think the largest, um, or one of the largest pieces, the mo mo largest moving parts of what we're looking at here is this matter of conflict of interest and there is a there is actually a really clear protocol for what we need to do in a situation like this when you feel like there's this conflict of interest and and arguably i, I can i definitely see your point um i understand that i've been very careful to to honor um our relationship as vocational specialist and, and, you know, an OOD participant separate from who I am with Matrix, but it is, it is a valid, a valid concern. And so what, what we really need to do is I need to not be your job coach. You need to have someone who's not a Matrix employee be your job coach. Um, that's that's the that is what OOB will say. That's you know that's what my training would say. Um, the fact that that's a concern means I, we need to find another someone other than Matrix to to be your job coach. That's the that's the way you can ensure that there's no undue influence or. That your that your interests are protected. So you know, and, and talking about and and talking that through, that is something that rises to the surface in all of this. And it's not something we had talked about. Um, it, it wasn't a concern you'd raise. It was something that I when when you got the job at Matrix, I'm like, after you got it, I thought. Okay, well, that poses an interesting situation. And I talked with my supervisor, and we were like, we just, just keep it separate. You know, there wasn't, I wasn't going to talk with Laurie unless you told me I could talk with Laurie. So, you know, we tried to keep that and did keep that tidy. But inherently, I understand. I have just objectively, as an employee of Matrix, I have a, I, you it's very fair of you to say I have a divided interest. So we should have someone who's not matrix be your job coach. That, that's it. I'm, I'm okay. Done. <laughs> Sorry, I promised not to interrupt you. And when I, I promise know, not to interrupt someone. Like, oh, he said he wouldn't interrupt, and I stopped. I need to let him know I'm done. Yeah. So yeah, that's. Oh. Okay. I'm done. Go ahead. All right. I wrote down the points that I think you were trying to make. Um, the the point about you not understanding where my uh, reasoning lies on why 
I would think that the paperwork and saying that they weren't going to need paperwork were not were not acceptable um, responses. Okay. And um, I specifically emailed Lori. Um, here, let me. I'll pull up the email so I can actually tell you the date. find it. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I can't find it because I'm a little bit flustered. I, sure. I, I emailed okay. Lori before any of this and okay. in the email I asked her specifically um, you know what? Um, I do have the email here. One second. I'm, I'm going to actually pull it up because I want to make sure that I'm getting this 100% correct. I don't want to, to misspeak. I realized I took a screenshot of it. So on the 23rd of the eighth month of the year, which is uh, August, <laughs> um, it is yeah, because that's how I have to figure out dates, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> um, Got it. Uh, I remember I was going to email Lori about job opportunities, and then she emailed me about the extension. And I, I, we, I remember the time. I don't remember specific communications. But well, I, I well you the, and I were, of... but you and I were talking about this email, and I asked you to help me edit the email to send. Remember? Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, helping that. You with, yeah, yes. Yeah. So the email that I sent said, uh, "I have a few questions about the contract extension. Will there be new paperwork to sign, and what would the terms of the extension?" Okay. So I clearly set up an expectation here that if there is paperwork, I would like to know. And they told me there was paperwork and that it was being worked on. And I wanted to know what the terms were, which they just decided that the terms were, well, take it or leave it. And you've already started. So I guess you've taken it, which is inappropriate, honestly. If I or anyone had done that to Matrix, the company, they would be doing exactly what I'm doing. They would be saying, wait, this is wrong. I need to stop. I need to go back. I need to figure out what has been said. I need to collect the information. And then I need to come forward and say, this is, this is wrong. We can take care of it now, but I know it's wrong. So... I understand what you mean about not understanding where I'm coming from, but I know that I've set up clear expectations with them, and I, I expected that when they told me things and set up expectations, that they would be clear expectations. Uh, as far as the conflict of interest is concerned, I was not trying to imply that it was you who had acted inappropriately. I was simply pointing out that there is no way for you, Lori, nor myself to know if we are being put in a situation where my interests are being abused without my knowledge. No, I, 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 and I, that's what I understood you to say. Okay, I just and, I wanted to yeah. clarify that because I didn't want yeah. you to go away thinking that I was accusing you or anything. No. And no. then, and then no. I, I also just wanted to touch quickly on the idea that you talked about of the job coach, which for me has been the really one of the biggest issues because an advocate is a person, like I said, who helps you understand and then helps you to talk to others so that they can understand, in essence, to, to summarize it. Whereas, okay. a, whereas a job coach, their job is to manage you. It is to Take your expectations and what you can do 
and tell you what is possible. And that's why it's difficult for me, because I need those separations. And when Lori, for instance, talked about family with me on the meeting before you caught on, you know, it was really hard for me. Because during the meeting, I think you guys thought I liked that. And I didn't at all. <laughs> um, okay. You know, it's one of those things where the idea of separating personal and private um, or I'm sorry, not, uh, per public and private and company and private lives um, only works for me if it truly is a separation, you know? Like, I don't want to be talking to people about my life. If they want to talk to me about my life, then they need to want to get to know me as a person. And that can't be done in a business meeting. Um, okay, I understand that. Yeah, and that's an expectation that I think I, I just need to let people know. I think that's a fair thing, and most people would understand after I said it. Uh, the, the thing is that I told Lori that I had an issue with her asking me how I'm doing when I got on the calls. She just kept doing it. <laughs> and I get it. It's one of those things where it's like such an ingrained habit with people, but I just can't. It's like I have this this uh i'm getting this pace ready you know it's like you're starting a, a really long race and so you've gotten up a headwind and you're running a little bit before the starting line and someone just throws a rock in front of you and you trip <laughs> you know yeah. so yeah. Yeah. um i know she's not trying to do it on purpose but it has caused me to be unable to talk to her freely sure um so that was what um, I wanted to say, and I do agree with you about the uh, only the only appropriate uh, response. Unfortunately, I think is to say that I need a new job coach or new person. As much as I don't like that, because I don't like to get to know people and to um, uh, gain the ability to talk to them better, and then lose them and have to get to know someone else. <laughs> Sure, I mean, uh, it, that's a lot. There's, there's a lot wrapped up in that change. I yeah. know. So, I know. Um, um, but I do appreciate you being very straightforward about that, because yeah, it, it, you know, it, 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 you know, it's probably something I should have voiced when I first thought about it. Well, but I, I'm like, I'm just gonna take a lot of care, and you, it'll be fine. And so. you, you are, you're forgetting that I did bring it up. And we, okay. did, we, 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 we did we spoke about it for a okay. short brief period and you told me that you were sure that you could keep, keep things separate and my response was to say well I believe that you can do it and that's good enough for me but I hadn't thought about this aspect of it that it doesn't matter how good your intentions are it puts me in an extremely liable position because I, like I said, I can't, there's, there's no way, no way for you to know, no way for Lori to know, and no way for me to know. So the only, yeah. the only thing to do is say, well, that, that situation can't exist then. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, you know, and, and, uh, not that this was your primary point, but I did want to offer, I just, I use the catch-all expression job coach because that's the industry term, but, uh, you know, I think advocacy, when uh, job coach can certainly denote that whole thing of I'm going to manage someone, I definitely don't approach it that way. No, you and, don't, and I and wanted to say it. a lot of advocacy in it. Yeah, I wanted to yeah. say that because I figured you would understand what I was trying to say, and mm -hmm. because... I think that it's important for myself going forward that I set up that expectation with people right away. Cause I do. I think that is important. Too many, um, too many people who are in a position where they have authority to help someone, like a doctor or a lawyer, they, they fall into that trap of thinking that it's their job to manage the person. And unfortunately, yeah. I 
can't have that around me. Well, and it really shouldn't be that. It's it's a it's an improper understanding of it, in my opinion. Not well, that that matters to everybody, uh, but it's it's. You know, I have to disagree only because I know some people who have disabilities, and their coping mechanism is that they have to find someone that they trust who can do that for them. Who just oh, if that's what they want. Yeah, sure. and that's yeah, the thing yeah, is, it's like I want. I understand yeah. that some people it's fine for them, and that's why a lot of people end up doing it because it is fine for them. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has to be what the individual's looking for. Yeah. Everybody's unique, so yes. <laughs> it can't be a one size fits all for sure. Yeah, and sometimes I see people trying to make it that, and I just think, oh my lord, that's not that's not good. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna do a couple things. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna call OOD because I have to, but yeah. I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna call OD and I'm gonna call Robert's supervisor if you are okay with that yes actually please do call for me okay. and talk to your supervisor <laughs> not robert yeah. and explain yeah. the situation yeah. and um tell them that if if they do not respect that i need someone who can act as an advocate and understand that and they need to find someone who understands the verbal problems with Asperger's because if they give me someone like Robert who both of those things he does not uh, understand the verbal component yeah, yeah. and he thinks that he's a manager yeah I I will I will yeah. convey all of that <laughs> yeah I absolutely will and I'm gonna do it um I have an appointment at 9 30 and um I had a cancellation after that so I'm gonna do it after my 10th or what is it? 9.30 appointment. So I'm going to try to get a hold of Jen Pittman. That's his supervisor. Yes, I, I, no <laughs> I remember her. her. You remember, right, right. Yeah. Um, I don't, I rarely talk to Jen. Um, I don't know what her schedule is, but I will make the reach out today. Thank you. Uh, this morning. Yeah. yeah. Um, if she remembers the situation, hopefully she'll get back to you quickly because uh, my yeah. last conversation with her ended very badly. Okay. <laughs> At okay. least on my end. I, I've not talked to her since then because I don't have the ability yet to t- say what I need to say without uh-huh. uh, devolving into a fight. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I will, I will um, absolutely have an in-depth conversation with her. And I'm going to convey the concerns about Robert, specifically like what you're saying. Just his verbal communication style is not a match, and his managerial approach is not a match. Yes. Um, okay. And I will also, I'm also going to convey to her um, that it's my recommendation that they, you know, that we they move quickly because so you are not left without support. Yeah. I mean, um, you it, know, yeah. It's, it's expedient. <laughs> Uh, response is 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 important. Um, yeah, well, I would say more than important. It is. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I mean, it is intrinsic. If they don't respond to me quickly, then they are not giving me the service that I have to have to be able to accomplish my life. And that's really what it comes down to: is that people yeah. want me to move at their speed. And I don't. I move at my own speed. That's the only sure. way I work. Yeah, and I'm gonna. I, I so I'm gonna let her know this is a, this is it's an urgent turnaround request. Okay, um, thank you. We, we gotta have that. Um, and then from that, from that, you know, I'm I'm gonna do all. I'm gonna do the hands on. Get this thing turned over quickly. And then I will step out so that we don't have any concern about conflict of of interest. And let me so let me also let me think about this. And you tell me if this meets your needs. I'm gonna let Laurie know that we recognize that it's a it's a dual relationship situation that we need to correct and remove. And that, um, that, um, do you want me 
do you want me at this point to convey to Laurie any of the the details of you know the matrix concerns at this point or would you I almost feel like that should be the next person I, not I don't me. know the answer to that question I think that it the, the, the right answer is to say yeah it should not be you because I think that if you did it it would put you in a, in a, a compromised position because you're aware of the situation you, uh-huh. under, you understand my concerns and um, uh, again there's no way for anyone to say with certainty what did or did not happen of what they don't know about so uh-huh. I think that that is the appropriate and the only fair okay. option that I can take towards you okay I, I do so I think um, hold on let me there was let me look at what I wrote down because there was something I thought would be good for you to point out when you do talk to Matrix. Oh, what was that? Hold on one second. I have to look at my check and scratching here. Uh, Brian. I want to think that it's going to come to me, and when it does, I'll, I'll reach out and yeah. let you know. Yeah, I, it, it's, there's, it's, there's too much. I can't. I can't reconstruct it. Yeah, I was gonna. I was going to say that at some point that. Um, you know, we've been talking about a lot, and I assume that you'll have thoughts, you know, uh-huh. things may come to you that you feel like you should share, and please, okay. please do reach out, text me, call me, you know, whatever okay. you feel is appropriate. Oh, uh, and, it, you know, I did want to say about the texting, I, I didn't think about you not liking text messages. My, my, my reason for texting you is I didn't want to leave you hanging. And so I understand in my interest to do something that I thought was respectful, it ended up being something that was stressful. And so it, I'm, I'm sorry about that. And it wasn't my intention. Thank you. I was, and I was I'm, actually trying to do you a solid, but I see that I didn't. So yeah, <laughs> I, I, I saw that and that's why I texted you back the way I did because uh-huh. and it's funny because I took screenshots I I wrote out like 15 other texts uh, of things that were on my mind from it and just took sure. screenshots of them because I've learned from hard experience that people don't communicate via text the way that I need to communicate and they it, they don't understand what I'm trying to say and I sure. usually don't understand what they're trying to say, and sure. that is, oh, it's a, a minefield. <laughs> yeah, you know, I understand. Yeah. I understand. And that is not something that I hold against you at all, because I can't even get my own brother to understand that. <laughs> I mean, it's so yeah, it's ingrained. Yeah, texting culture. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. my sister... I was talking to my sister, and she lives in Italy, and she was telling me uh, that I should text her so that she can talk to me while she's doing things. Because when I'm on the uh, when I'm on Skype with her, she can't do things. And I'm like, well, when I'm texting you, I can't do things. Right. Right. <sighs> yeah. So. No. Yeah. yeah. I understand. Um. But okay. Thank you. Well, you, you are most welcome. Thank you. And um, I will get I will get on top of everything as soon as I get out of my uh, next appointment. Yes. I'll get with Jen. Um, and I'll also, I think Lori, does Lori go on vacation? I'm not, she I may be on vacation already, or she may oh, leave at okay. the end of the day. I don't know. Okay. I'll see if I can... Uh, if I can track her down, I'll touch base with her to let her know that we're going to do a handoff. 
and um and i'll you know tell her like i said that we have a divided interest that we need to uh, correct and and remove um i guess remove more than correct is we're just you know yeah we're recognizing it now that we're recognizing taking it, we're taking, it. taking the action that's appropriate yeah yeah um and i i think she will understand that's the completely same thing to do um and actually take that as a positive so okay if you think of anything else you just let me know okay that's that's what i'll do all right thank you i'll let you know if anything right. else comes up and you do the same all right will do thank you Lisa. thanks brian all right all right bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. Thank you.